Yat e che e la wis banali dash jinne ado to he dlini na kaid in the enchon tra ba ha ba chin as chi dash che do chi chi dash na le dashn sa ho li ye de na sha de chi jin be kha de i am louise banali i set my clans and traditional navajo introduction way and I'm from Black Mesa, Big Mountain community in northeastern Arizona. 1968, Black Mesa was uh, designated to become a coal mining community where Peabody Energy was uh, allowed to start processing coal. So surface mining began then and um, it was an outside interest group to the Navajo Hopi Nation uh, energy agency that wanted to take that and make electricity for the whole Southwest region. So it began and not with a consent or consultation with the entire community. As this happened, Congress also develop a legislation known as Public Law 93531, which called for over 10,000 Navajos and over 300 Hopis uh, to relocate from these lands that were going to be extracted for coal. This happened and back home we had no, no roads. We only had wagon trails. There were a lot of uses for horses because that was our main source of transportation. We had a lot of um, livestock, sheep, goats, cows, horses, which we utilized as an economic base. So everything was plentiful. In my childhood days, we had a lot of natural springs everywhere. Uh, it wasn't hard to find water. So as time went on, uh, relocation programs started and people started to move off the land. And in my community of Big Mountain, uh, my elders at the time decided that this was not a good idea because this was a murder being committed on Black Mesa, which is a female mountain as we refer to it in our cultural ways. And so my community of Big Mountain organized itself and began to oppose this uh, law. So a lot of families got removed from there. The land supposedly was partitioned, lines drawn, fencing came in. We went out there and fought that we got arrested with my mother and my two sisters my aunties they went out there and they got arrested but um, we continued to just hold our ground because with the spiritual understanding was that this is going to imbalance the whole planet if it continues so that made us uh, want to just stay there and defend that land as much as we could. So we did, and we still do to this day. Coal is being extracted by tons and tons. It got slurry down the Mesa, Black Mesa. And then from there, it got railroaded into Page, where Navajo Generating Station was. And... From there, it was transformed into electricity to light up the entire Southwest. We still don't have electricity to this day. We still don't have water to this day that we could just turn on a faucet and it would come out. So the water was being depleted because that's what was used to slush the coal. And also Central Arizona Project, which is um, a water agency from phoenix area that was extracting the water at the same time the navajo aquifer so in this way the water the land is being depleted and and destroyed for its natural resources and 
in the meantime, we are told that we cannot have sheep, we cannot have goats, we cannot have cows or horses, we cannot go out and farm like we used to. We cannot go out and collect wild food or wild medicine. All that became a restricted area. So some of us said, no, we're not going to recognize that jurisdiction. We're going to live here with our Mother Earth. We're going to continue to defend this because we know the bigger picture, what is going to happen and where we are headed to. So uh, as a child, my grandfather talked to me. He says, what is going on and what is going to happen here? This is in the late 70s. He says, when they extract the mineral from this earth, it's going to impact the moon, and it's going to imbalance the whole thing. He said, it's going to imbalance what we know as life. So you out there, the younger generation at that time, he says, do all you can to defend and protect it because this is all you have. This is all we have. He says, and you are not standing alone. Maybe you look around and you don't see somebody there with you but he says the trees the plants the animals things that don't talk he says those are who you're defending so I always took that to heart and remember that whenever I'm doing whatever I can to defend this we also saw that when they take out the coal and you know they dig so far down and extract it in the meantime, there's a lot of poisonous gas that's being released into the air. So on cold nights, it doesn't move. It stays there. And when people sleep in that, they develop health problems. It impacts their kidneys. It impacts their lungs. And it impacts the whole balance of life. And they become sick and ill. The land becomes ill, you become ill. If the water is ill, you become ill because you are a part of that. And it's a cycle of life that's being disturbed and disrupted. With the land itself, once you pull out the dirt to open to the cold surface, if you let that soil sit there for a long time, it dies. So then when you extract that coal, which originally is to filter the water. You take that out, haul it off, make another toxic with it over there and give people electricity down the road. You know, this soil is then moved back into those pit holes, but the land is totally dead by then. Nothing can grow there that has a big root or a longer root. So, you know, it's dead forever. And uh, that's what they have done to, to the rich there. And um, us women, you know, were disturbed by that because we're women and, you know, the mother earth is our mother. It's a female being. And so we get everything for this life that we're living from her. And that is our biggest concern, even though now the coal mine has moved on and there's no accountability there's no bonds even if there was where is it it's not in the community you know the restoration projects are not happening when are they going to happen so these are like lots of questions to the so-called tribal government to office of surface mining to the department of interior because they're supposed to be the regulators but no answer. We need to seek balance. We need to somehow end the greed and begin to realize that it's not all about us human living in these gold houses. You know, maybe that's the world that these colonizers come from, but not ours. Ours is in balance with nature. And that's what we want back. And we want to continue to uphold those values and live those ways of life because that's all we have.